Sometimes when I'm coding, I am using a little star to represent a pointer to something, or I'm using an N percent. Uh, and I understand that. Even though most students that arrive here in a course, uh, they, I think they do have some experience with the C programming language, right? It is just natural, right, that people have like this kind of curiosity and they probably work with C before, but that's no problem if you never worked with C before. I just, I'm going to do a little 101, very quick review of these ideas of pointers. What are the operators that we can use with pointers? What do they mean, right? When I use a little star, an asterisk, what does that mean? When I use an N percent in front of a variable, what does that mean? So I just need to, we need to be on the same page when it comes to working with these ideas of pointers, right? Uh, I don't, I'm not going to be, we're not going to be masters of pointers after this small lecture, but we just need to be aware of these operators and what these things really mean whenever I'm actually coding and using an N percent or coding and using a little asterisk. So how do these things work? Let's just get one thing out of the way, right? C is a language that allows us to work with pointers, right? So we're going to have a variable that is a pointer. So a pointer can be used to store the memory address of other variables, functions, or even other pointers, right? So we can have a pointer that points to a pointer, and that points to a pointer, a pointer, a pointer. So we do have all those things. Uh, that is not very, we're not going to see these things that often. Usually a pointer is just a little variable that holds memory address of another variable. But usually that's how these things are going to work out. Pointers, they allow low-level memory access. Uh, and when I say low-level memory access, it means that we can have access to the actual memory address where something is located in memory, right, in RAM. And then, uh, you look, the low-level memory access means that I can actually go and I can add to that pointer, I can subtract to that pointer. So whenever something is located in memory, I can actually go and offset, offset, offset. I have this low-level control of memory addresses, right? So this is one thing that C allows us to do, for better or for worse. Some people say that that is very unsafe. Some people say that that is not really good practice. But look, in the context of PlayStation programming, there's no one safe, right? So we just have access to the whole memory. We can do whatever we want with it, right? We have no connection to the internet. There, nothing is unsafe. No one has access to our memory. That is fine. We can go allocate. We can go and have low-level memory access. Should be fine. And also, besides low-level memory access, we have this strong link between pointers and what we call dynamic memory allocation. And when I say dynamic memory allocation, is basically, for example, if I don't know beforehand how many elements I have in an array, I can wait until runtime to go and say, I want to allocate these things dynamically, right? So if I need a thousand positions dynamically, I go and I allocate these things. And whenever we allocate something in memory, the access is usually done by pointers, right? So we have a little pointer that points to a little position in memory, and that is the start of our dynamic array. And then we can just use that pointer to go and offset to the second element, third element, fourth element. So this is usually done by pointers, right? Dynamic memory allocation. Whenever we have to go and ask to allocate things dynamically in memory, whenever we don't know beforehand, right? I don't know if my arrays are going to have 10 positions or 20 positions. I don't know, right? If I'm reading something from the CD-ROM, it can be 30 objects or 30 enemies, or it can be 100 enemies, right? I do not know until I am actually running that program, right? At runtime, dynamic memory allocation. So pointers are really, really strong with that idea as well. And there are so many other things that the C language allows us to do. So the C language, we are going to work a lot with the ideas of pointers. And let me just give you a couple of examples here because I think it's going to be a little easier if you understand how these things are going to look in code. So super easy, right? Whenever we are declaring something, uh, the first one, right, that int num, that is just me declaring a normal integer number that is going to occupy, in our case, four bytes in memory, right? So we're going to have that 32-bit uh, integer number in our PlayStation architecture. That is going to go reserve like 32 bits in memory. That is a number, right? That is our integer. And I can have also an integer pointer, right? So this is going to be a pointer to an integer in memory. And I am saying that, you see the little star? That is what we say, that that is a little pointer to the type, what type? Integer. So that is going to hold a memory address of an integer in memory. And I'm saying that uh, I'm declaring the name pnum, right? A pointer to a number. 
And it doesn't have to be primitive types, right? It doesn't have to be just an integer or just a long or a character. It can be a complex data type. So for example, I can declare a struct. Let's just say that we have a struct vector, right? That idea of uh, a mathematical vector, right? In physics, for example, we have x, y, and z components. That is a vector. And trust me, we're going to use vectors a lot whenever we're programming with the PlayStation. So if a vector is a struct that has a memory layout where I have one long vx, another long vy, and another long vz, right, one after the other in memory, I go and declare this type right here, and then I can declare a vec, which is a struct of the type vector. So as soon as we declare a vec of the type vector, it goes and it already reserves the memory space for these three things, three longs one after the other in memory. And this second one is not a struct vector. This is just a pointer to the type struct. So we are going to point to some struct in memory. But right now, if I don't initialize this point, this pointer vector right here, if it is not initialized, right now it is pointing to no. Right? So we're going to have this idea of a no pointer that is pointing to nothing yet. We need to initialize these pointers for them to actually point to correct positions in memory of the correct type. Let's just look at that. So let's just say if I have a int, uh, int main, right, a main function, uh, I can initialize a variable number, integer, no surprise, right, a number equals to 599 or whatever value we want. And look at this one. Pointer number, that pnum pointer that I just declared up there, which should point to an integer, pnum equals to n percent num. n percent is what we call the address of operator. So n percent is going to get the memory address of a variable, and then we are loading and storing that memory address inside the pointer number. Do you see we are not storing the entire struct? We are not making a copy of the entire struct. We are basically just pointing to that memory position where num was declared, and it's located in RAM. That is how it's worked, right? And these are just integers, but it would be the same thing if we were uh, pointing to a struct, right? Where I can have a struct initializing x, y, and z inside, and then a pointer, a p vector equals to n percent vector. And then I just have, I point to the start of that struct in memory, okay? And look, uh, you can already, you know, I'm just printing f a couple of things. So what do you think is going to be inside pnum if you just print out the pnum directly, right? Raw pnum. Uh, what do you think is going to be inside num? And what do you think is going to be inside this star pnum? Well, it is no surprise that pnum is going to have a memory address there, right? So I'm going to have in this architecture, let's just say that I have um, hexadecimal 404018. So in this memory address, I have, uh, these are pointing to this variable right here, right? This is what pnum has inside. That is the content. Which also brings me the, uh, the answer to the question, right? What is the size of pnum? If I declare pnum as a pointer, what is the size that is going to, we're going to have for pnum? Well, the answer is, it depends on the architecture that we are programming for, right? So if you're programming for the PlayStation, a pointer holds memory address for this architecture that is 32 bits. Right? And if you have a modern architecture, then you're going to have something bigger. You can have 64 bits for a pointer. Do you understand? So depend, it depends on the architecture right, that you are programming for. In our case, memory addresses pointers are going to be usually 32 bits, 4 bytes. Right? Just already kind of give you an, um, an idea of what we're talking about. Right, so again, if I go and I print pnum, I'm going to have a memory address inside. If I print num, the surprise, right? I'm going to have the actual content, the number inside pnum. But I have another operator, which is called the, the reference operator. So if I want to actually get the content that the pointer is pointing at, I can use this little star in front. And this means that I'm going to go there and get the actual content. So if I print the, the reference of the pointer, I'm going to get the 599, because this pointer happens to be pointing to the number. Right, so, right. 
Look, super simple review. Um, this is just the beginning of our conversation. I just we need to be aware of whenever we declare these things. And I just want to point out something, right? We have to be careful because look at this example right here. If I declare integer and I put the little star right here next to the type, and I have ptr, comma, something else, we have to be careful with this declaration because whenever I declare an integer pointer, the only one that is a pointer is the first one. The second one is a normal integer, right? So that is why, right, because of this little problem right here, that is why you will see people usually declare the star close to the variable name. So look at what is going to happen with this star right here. Usually people say this thing right here. They say integer star pointer, right? So I'm going to have, for example, integer star pinum, and the star, the asterisk, goes usually next to the variable name, to the identifier that it is the pointer that we're talking about, right? To avoid these problems of thinking that this no pointer right here would be a pointer, so you just go and you put the star next to this thing right here. So pay attention that the second one, it is not a pointer, right? The only pointer is the first one. So I think that in my code, I will start giving preference to this type of syntax right here. Whenever my pointer, I just put the star next to the identifier, to the variable name. All right? So with that out of the way, I need to talk to you also about one super useful thing about pointers, which is the idea of passing parameters as pointers, right? So I have to pass a parameter sometimes, actually, Oftentimes, I don't want to pass the entire struct with all the members inside as a copy, right? I don't want to make a copy of the parameter. So we need to be able to pass parameters almost like passing as reference, right? So I have to pass only a pointer to the big parameter data that I have in memory. So I just pass this pointer around as parameter. And for that, I need to talk to you about another operator, which is the arrow operator. So the arrow operator, right, is just a little arrow in C. We can use that to access the members, meaning the variables, the methods inside a struct through a pointer. Right. Let's just give an example so I think it's easier to understand. Think that I have a vector and I have a pointer to a vector. And think that I have a function that the responsibility of that function is receiving a pointer to a vector, do you see how I don't want to start passing the entire vector as parameter? I just want to pass a pointer to vector. It's a lot smaller, right, to start. I don't have to start copying too many things in memory. The only thing that I'm moving through memory is just a little pointer. A lot shorter, a lot more efficient. I don't want to pass the entire vector with x, y, and z, right? And sure, a vector is a small struct, but think if you have a big struct with a p and g image. Right, with all those bytes of the image inside, or if you have a huge array, you don't want to pass the entire array as parameter and kind of do a copy of that array as parameter. You just want to pass a pointer, usually to the first position of that array, right? So you just pass a little pointer to that type. So if this function clear vector receives a vector pointer, the way that I'm going to access the members inside that struct that is a pointer I can use the arrow operator. So instead of using a dot, I say v, because v is a pointer, I say v arrow vx. That access the vx inside the thing that the pointer v is pointing at. Right? So look at what it says. Since the parameter v was passed as a pointer, right? since that v is a pointer to a vector, the arrow operator dereferences v and access the members of the struct pointed by v. Let me just already write down uh, what I have right here. Look at this. If I say object.member, this is using the dot operator to access a member of the struct directly. But if I say object arrow member, this is using the arrow operator to access a member through a pointer. So it means that this thing right here, this arrow operator, is equivalent to and is the same as if I dereference my object and then do a dot member. Right, so the arrow on a pointer, it dereferences first and then access the member inside. Does that make sense? So pointer v, arrow vx, the member of that struct through a pointer that I passed as parameter. 
And let me continue the example because look at this. In my ink main, I can initialize my normal vector vec dot vx, dot vy, and dot vz. So I can use the dot operator to access the struct directly, right? This is not a pointer, this is the actual struct. And then I initialize the values that I want. And I say pvec equals to the address of the vector. So my pvec is pointing to the vector, exactly the same one that I have right here. Here pvec is pointing to the address of the vector vec. So address of is this operator right here. It gets me the address in memory of this variable. And look at what happens whenever we invoke the function. Look, pay attention that the function expects a vector pointer, right? So we are expecting to pass a vector pointer. So if I want to clear the vector vec, I need to get the address of vec whenever I'm passing this thing as parameter, right? So since vec is not a pointer, I need to get the address of that struct because that is what I expect to receive right here. So the function expects a vector, so we pass address of vec. And pay attention to how we are passing the address of vector. So whatever we do with this parameter right here, whenever I access v, vx, v, vy, and v, vz, and I change the contents, it means that I'm changing the contents of that memory address. So this is us almost passing something as reference, right? I go, I pass this vec as reference, and whatever I do with this vec, I'm doing directly with the memory address. So I'm changing this thing in place. I'm changing the contents of the vector directly as I'm changing the values in memory. Do you see the power of that? So whenever I pass clear vector, just passing this parameter, Whatever I do inside clear vector, I am changing this value directly, right? Because I'm sending this as the address of, I just go and I send the pointer. And whatever I do with this pointer, the member variables inside the pointer, I am changing them directly. So this is basically clearing, right? Zeroing my vector, whatever vector I'm passing right here. And just pay attention that since clear vector expects a vector pointer, if we want to pass pvec, we don't need to use the address of, because pvec is already a pointer of the type vector. So all I have to say is clear vector, and I just pass the pointer directly, because that is exactly what my function is expecting right here. Good stuff. So pvec is already a pointer. We simply pass pvec. We don't need the address of operator for this thing right here. So that's it. Remember, object dot member, it gets directly the member of a struct and the arrow operator, the references, the object, and then access the member of this thing, which is equivalent as the referencing the object and only then getting the dot member of this the reference object right here.